Some world leaders eat healthy, others like to pig out. Some drink alcohol, others won't touch a drop of the stuff. From presidents to popes to populists, here's what these world leaders eat in a day. President Joe Biden has one of the most serious and important jobs on the planet, but his culinary preferences are decidedly less lofty. The president enjoys peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, pizza, BLTs, and ice cream, both on its own and as the beginnings for a Sunday. And his favorite meal is noodles. First Lady Jill Biden told Parade, it's pasta all the way. He likes angel hair pasta with red sauce. The president's beverage of choice is orange-flavored Gatorade. And in 2021, Biden admitted to Us Weekly, my biggest vice is chocolate chip ice cream, no mint. My name is Joe Biden. I love ice cream. Put simply, former President Donald Trump isn't the most easygoing of diners, and his tastes tend to swerve in one particular direction. Fast food. Should I have the last slice? Actually, you're only entitled to half. There are a few major American fast food chains at which Trump won't eat. In 2016, he told the press his favorite McDonald's meal is the Fish Delight, which probably meant the filet fish sandwich. Later that year, he tweeted a photo of himself on his private jet eating KFC, with a knife and fork for some reason. And after campaign in Florida, he sent his driver to Burger King to pick up food for his team. Beyond all that, the former president's penchant for serving fast food banquets to White House guests became infamous. What else? Well, he eats his steaks burnt to a crisp if his longtime butler is to be believed. He also scrapes the toppings off his pizza and refuses to eat the dough and never touches alcohol. A few years back, Trump appeared on television and declared the meatloaf sandwich to be his favorite. So there you have it. Fast food, pizza toppings, meatloaf, and overcooked steaks. During his 50 years as heir to the throne, King Charles III frequently endorsed organic farming. My old Aston Martin, which I've had for 51 years, that runs on, can you believe this, surplus English white wine you and, and whey from the cheese presses. He actually started his own farm, Highgrove House, and in 1990 began selling food grown there via Dutchie Originals, now the biggest organic foods company in the UK. The kitchens at his royal residences make sure to always have plenty of fruits and vegetables from Charles's company on hand. He's especially fond of the jarred plums. When Charles travels, he brings along a basket full of hand-picked breakfast foods, including muesli, dried fruit, and six types of honey. The king skips lunch, preferring to wait for afternoon tea. At around 5 p.m., the king takes his tea with hard-boiled eggs and toast. Concerned about the environmental impact of large-scale farming, Charles avoids meat and fish twice a week and dairy once a week. But when he does eat meat, he chooses game like pheasant, grouse, and venison, or Scottish salmon. Vladimir Putin wakes up late and eats breakfast at noon, and he doesn't normally drink alcohol, but loves a cup of coffee after breakfast. According to the Russian state news organization Pravda, Putin eats healthily and enjoys tomatoes, cucumbers, and lettuce with his meals. How far you choose to believe that, of course, is up to you. But Putin has revealed in the past that he often doesn't eat at all in the afternoon. A late breakfast will do that to you. He enjoys drinking kefir, a kind of fermented milk drink. On a slightly more relatable level, he does love ice cream and pistachio is his favorite flavor. On a slightly less relatable level, Putin regularly eats dishes like smoked sturgeon, veal tenderloin, salmon and crab kulbiak, biak, caviar, whitefish, and steak at his state banquets, and reportedly has all his dishes tested for poison. Why is your chef so angry with you? Oh, last night's beef was a little tough, so I had his family killed. <laughs> Which you would do as well if you were him, wouldn't you? When she served as Chancellor of Germany, Angela Merkel was seen as the human face of German foreign policy the world over. So maybe it's fitting that her eating habits are so firmly rooted in her and Central Europe's history. In a 2010 magazine interview, Merkel admitted to one peculiar dietary habit, hoarding. Merkel explained, I still buy something as soon as I see it, even when I don't really need it. It's a deep-seated habit stemming from the fact that in an economy where things were scarce, you just used to get what you could when you could. Merkel grew up in communist East Germany, where food was hard to come by, and citizens were forced to spend long hours in line to buy it. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. Merkel enjoys eating classic Eastern European dishes, such as solyanka, meat and pickled vegetable soup, lecho, a Hungarian vegetable stew, and shashlik, a kind of spicy kebab. Since becoming Prime Minister of Canada in 2015, Justin Trudeau has become something of an internet sensation, despite the occasional misstep. The Prime Minister was mm -hmm. forced to stand in the House of Commons mm -hmm. and apologize for eating a chocolate. Take a Trudeau has been relatively forthcoming with the details of his personal life and daily routine. In 2015, the then candidate for Canada's top job sat down with Huffington Post to talk about his eating habits. He explained that he doesn't drink coffee, enjoys Asian food, and prefers beer over wine. Considering Trudeau's fondness for Asian food, it might seem unsurprising that he used it to take shots at himself during a 2019 press gallery dinner. Food tonight was pretty great, but I was hoping for sushi. 
I love Chinese food. The joke, in reference to his mix-up of Japan and China in front of Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe a week earlier, nonetheless sparked controversy in China itself, among internet users who claimed that sushi does have a strong connection to Chinese heritage. Emmanuel Macron's eating habits can be summed up in two words, unmistakably French. In 2017, the Elysee Palace's head chef revealed that only French products are served at the president's table, with the exception of coffee, and priority is given to fruit, vegetables, and dairy products made less than 100 kilometers from Paris. Apparently, Macron himself is particularly partial to cordon bleu, a dish of meat, often veal or pork, wrapped around cheese, then breaded and fried. Bridget Macron has a reputation for healthy eating, so it's perhaps inevitable that Macron follows her good example. Though we can't know for sure, there's at least a chance Macron partakes in his wife's 10-a-day fruit habit. Otherwise, the other major presence in Macron's diet is wine. In fact, his presidential wine cellar is made up of 14,000 bottles, all produced in France. The oldest bottle is said to be a Sauterne that dates back to 1906. But then, maybe that's just the kind of opulence you'd expect from a man who once spent well over $50,000 on plates. Back in 2018, Sanjeev Kapoor, a popular chef invited to cook for India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi during a visit to the United Arab Emirates, revealed some of Modi's eating habits. In an interview with Gulf News, Kapoor said, Our Prime Minister is a dream to cook for. He is not fussy and loves unpretentious food. He has such a busy schedule, so I made sure that he ate food that gives you energy. The menu during Kapoor's dinner included beetroot minced kebabs, dal and rice, while the Prime Minister's breakfast consisted of flatbread with grains such as millet and rice. As Kapoor Kapoor explained to Gulf News, he believes in simple vegetarian food and is a believer that food is a great way to learn about each other's countries and cultures. Not too much is known about the Israeli prime minister's eating habits, but one thing is certain, the guy really likes ice cream, it seems. In 2013, it came to light that Netanyahu had set aside a budget in excess of $2,000 to satisfy his cravings for ice cream. This budget, which was used at Matutala Parlor on Balfour Street in Jerusalem, allowed the prime minister and his family to eat around 14 kilograms of ice cream every month. That parlor was chosen because it catered to Netanyahu's own tastes, which include vanilla and pistachio. Otherwise, however, Netanyahu's diet seems pretty clean. One source claims the prime minister and his family are making a move toward vegetarianism, even if he hasn't quite gone full veg. During meetings, Netanyahu is said to enjoy eating fruit and vegetables, and outside of work, he likes to snack on nuts and raisins. No real cardinal sins, then. Aside from spending thousands of dollars a year on pistachio ice cream, that is. Considering North Korea isn't exactly known for the bounty of its harvests, you might think the country's leader lives on as sparse a diet as his people. Of course, if you actually know anything about North Korea, you know that's never going to be the case. Kim Jong-un's eating habits are lavish, to say the least. The despot is particularly fond of immuntal cheese and actually ate so much at one point that he had to step out of the limelight to recover. He takes after his late father in enjoying sushi, and the family once employed its own sushi chef. His steak tends to be Kobe, of course, being one of the most expensive cuts in the world, and Kim also loves salami, pepperoni, ham, and prosciutto. Drinks-wise, you're looking at coffee, on which $941,812 was spent from his budget in a single year, and alcohol, with around $30 million a year of high-end liquors imported into the country for his personal consumption. Oh, and obviously he consumes snake wine too, a drink that comes with a dead cobra in the bottle and is said to improve virility. No surprises there, then. The Pope's diet is something of a dichotomy. On one hand, he likes to keep things simple. He rarely eats at the restaurants frequented by other senior Vatican officials and chose a simple pasta dish as his first dinner after election to the papacy in 2013. Usually, his dinners consist of things like baked chicken with salad, fruit, and an occasional glass of wine. His breakfasts are equally basic. They're taken in the hotel dining room at the Casa Santa Marta and are usually made up of orange juice and membrillo, a kind of gelatinous pasta made from quince. He's also known to occasionally show up to the Vatican canteen and eat with the staff there. On the other hand, everything he does eat is made with the finest ingredients in the world, with many of the crops, plants, and animals used to feed him grown at the Castel Gandolfo estate in rural Italy. He's also a great lover of wine and has often lamented the very idea of a wedding celebration taking place without it. And that's backed up by scripture, by the way. His meals when traveling are often as extravagant as his entourage, and he gets the opportunity to dine in some pretty fabulous restaurants. All in all, his diet seems like that of a simple man thrust into a life of sheer luxury. That's Francis for you. The Dalai Lama's diet isn't too far removed from that of the Pope. 
He's restrained in many ways. He doesn't eat dinner at all, for example, as Buddhist monks and nuns are forbidden from eating after midday. His first meal of the day often consists of porridge, bread, tea, and sampa, a kind of flour made with roasted barley and mixed with yak's milk. I learned some nutrition, nut, nutrition, nutritionists. Uh, nutritionists. Nutritionists. Say, the samba is very good for health. He's a big fan of noodles of all kinds, enjoys dumplings known as Momo, and drinks tea in the evenings. He likes to eat out on the road, and the restaurants chosen to cook for him are often subjected to intense scrutiny by his security detail. Oh, and he once claimed to John Oliver that he cured Mongolia of alcoholism through the power of horse milk. So there's that. In 1959, the Dalai Lama adopted a lacto-ovo vegetarian diet in an attempt to adhere to Buddhist beliefs against killing. After only 20 months, however, he contracted hepatitis and gallbladder disease and was forced to resume eating meat. In 2010, he told NDTV that he eats meat a few times a week, but otherwise tries to stick to life as a vegetarian. 